Good morning, Barry Bryson here. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. We're in Matthew's Gospel and we're in chapter 14. And last time we were together, uh, John the Baptist has been beheaded and Jesus uh, has been informed. Uh, John's disciples took his body away, not his head, of course, and then went and reported this to Jesus. And um, this is what happens. In chapter 14, I'll be reading verses 13 through 21. Now, when Jesus heard it, he withdrew from there in a boat to a lonely place by himself. And when the multitudes heard of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When he came out, he saw a great multitude and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. And when it was evening, the disciples came to him saying, the place is desolate and the time has already passed. So send the multitudes away that they may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. And ordering the multitudes to recline on the grass, he took the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food. And breaking the loaves, he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitudes, and they all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 full baskets. And there were about 5,000 men who ate aside from the women and children. This miracle, the feeding of the 5,000, is one of the few events, uh, other than the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, which is recorded in all four Gospels, but it is it's recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We get the most detail from Mark's Gospel, but we get some very key detail that we didn't know before from John's Gospel. John would have been writing, of course, maybe 40 years after Mark and Matthew wrote their Gospels. Well, from the other Gospels, we know that it is at this time that the disciples return from their first preaching tour. Jesus is off by himself processing the death of his cousin, John the Baptist, when his disciples return. And then they need time to decompress, to debrief, just to, 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 to process what has happened to them. And so they go to the other side um, and, and uh, people see them and run along the shore and, 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 and catch up with them on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus feels compassion. They're in a deserted place. Jesus feels compassion, and so he preaches to them. And at the end of the preaching, um, you know, they've been there all day. Uh, they didn't intend to make the trip, and it's, the people need something to eat. And, um, and it's a crowd. And we find out at the end of each story just how big the crowd was. 5,000 men. One would presume there were equal numbers at least of women and children and probably more because men would have been working, earning their wage. And so we may have a crowd of fifteen to 20,000 people there to hear Jesus speak. What we know from uh, John's Gospel is that they get the twelve, the, the, the loaves and the fishes, the five loaves and the two fish, um, from a little boy whose mother has given him a lunch. Um, and we also know that Andrew is the one who found him, and Andrew is the one who brought him to Jesus, this little boy who was willing to share. I always love that mom, you know, who sent her kid off with a Lunchable. She's probably there with him. I doubt he's there by himself, but she packed a Lunchable, that we, at least, or the first century equivalent of it, meat and bread, you know. This would have been dried fish from the Sea of Galilee and, and small, flat, you know, discs of bread, you know, like pita bread, perhaps. Um, anyway, that's what he would have had. Jewish men carried what would be the equivalent of a fanny pack when they were traveling, the apostles would have had theirs. Uh, that's why there are 12 baskets there. These would have been woven baskets about the size of a fanny pack into which they would put kosher food so they would have something if they were out and about and couldn't get any kosher food. But they came back with empty baskets. And by the end of this, they had full baskets. 
And how did they receive those full baskets? By sharing what they had and serving it to others. This is one of those events that is a lived parable. It teaches us so much about so many things. Um, we fill our baskets not by acquisition, but by service and sharing. And they learned that lesson that day. They needed to process what had happened to them, and they wanted time alone with Jesus. Jesus needed time alone, but he responded to the impulse of compassion, and their baskets were filled. Some of the details we get from Mark is that the, that the people sat down in an orderly fashion like garden rows uh, on the green grass, and there's much grass in that place, and and uh, so you, you really get the visual, but the lessons in, in Mark, but the lessons are there in every gospel that we fill our baskets up when we share and when we serve. We'll talk about the aftermath of this pivotal event next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes.